Zane Clodfelter with Otters TV here with Preston Leinenbach for our series wrap up. You know, a week ago we were all euphoric. Yeah. Evansville had just beaten Southern <laughs> Illinois three straight days. Then you take, what, two of three from Gateway. And then this weekend, what happened? It's hard to say. There's, there's a lot of things that just didn't go the Otters way this weekend. There's no doubt about it. River City um, kind of seemed to have an edge, not only in terms of just obviously the results, but also coming in. And uh, I think Board just had a better mentality than the Otters this weekend. The Otters had a great weekend last week, and obviously sweeping the minors. Good week in the midweek against Gateway, and it, for some reason it just kind of fell off this weekend. Um, just uh, and again, a lot of different aspects of the game just didn't quite go the Otters' way, or the, they didn't play the way that they hoped. There's one positive: it was Patrick McGuff being back in the starting rotation yep. for them. Went four in four innings in the uh, the series finale, uh, where Evansville lost eight to two. The eight runs really. Only a couple are charged to McGuff. The thing that kind of overshadows at least him being back, all the mistakes on Sunday, and then it kind of just was the theme of the weekend, all all the mistakes. Yeah, there's just a lot of balls um, defensively that just were not played um, the right way this weekend for the Otters. And again, I don't know if it has something to do with the heat just kind of wearing down on the players a little bit. Because remember, last weekend against the Miners, it was not this warm. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was kind of a down, cooler time. Um, the midweek wasn't as bad with the rain that came through. Obviously, the, the delays um, that occurred on Tuesday night, pushing the game to Wednesday for the doubleheader. But again, it just out in the field, just I don't want to say nonchalant, but just plays that should be made that weren't played by the Irish. And, and the players know that. They know. Um, obviously, the, the break's almost here, but there's still a finish line to the first half that has to be made yeah. uh, with the appropriate attitude going forward for this team. If the Heat you know, is a factor for some players. Not to be mean, because, you know, we, we work for the team, so right. we, we try to be as, as pro otters as we can be, right. but it gets to the point where, like, you're going to have to adjust to this heat yeah. because, I mean, it is, what, the beginning part of July? There's two more months of this heat and humidity in Evansville, and it might even stretch into September. The humidity is, is the big factor. Yeah. There's a lot of these players who are not necessarily familiar with the Midwest, mm -hmm. and the humidity can be a factor just because it just feels like there's extra pressure on the body. Um, and just the air feels heavier, and it's just something that, like you said, the players will have to get used to. And obviously, these guys are conditioned; they're professional ball players. Their bodies are conditioned. But again, sometimes there's just some, an unexpected factor where if you're not used to it, you got to familiarize yourself. But again, not making excuses. But again, just got to go, take a break, take tomorrow off. Uh, you know, this will be on the road. Just kind of regroup mentally, get the body rested, and get ready for a. Uh, it's going to be, I guess you could consider a long six game road trip. Yeah, and I have to give River City just a ton of credit. Oh, again, gosh. again, we don't like doing it on Otters TV, it's not Rascals TV. But yesterday, their starting pitcher, Dan Ludwig, gets drilled. A mm. horrifying moment uh, when, you, when you watch him lay there. Luckily, uh, by the end of the game, he was on the field with his teammates right. celebrating. Cool. We've had some people ask on social media about his well being. He is on the 14 day DL now. He was supposed to, well, the person who came in to replace him mm -hmm. was supposed to be today's starter. Right. So the Rascals came in with an opportunity to sweep Evansville here at Bossy Field, basically with a spot starter. And that spot starter right. was and lights out. For River City, if you want to say, you know, give them a tip of the cap, you have to because talking about facing challenges and adversity, that's what this team has done for them. Uh, with not only just this weekend, but in the past week, they've had about quite a few injuries unexpectedly. But you talk about Ludwig, again, we were all concerned. Every fan that was in the stand was concerned for his well-being after that line drive last night. But it's great to see that, again, he's going to be all right. Just got to take a little time off, regroup, and uh, get healthy again. But you're talking about Ryan Orr came in. He's supposed to be today's starter. Came in, did a phenomenal job, I thought, last night in relief, going quite a few innings in relief. And then today's starter, Johnny Ortiz, who normally is a reliever on the pin, making his first start in nearly two years in any level of baseball. And he goes six innings. I mean, you can't ask much more from Steve Brooke, the manager for the River City Rascals. And again, just the tip of the cap to the Rascals for just knowing how to work through these tough situations and Steve Brooke for managing those situations and getting his team ready. So it is interesting to look at when you look at how this uh, homestand kind of shook down. Uh, coming into this series, Evansville was 5-1, and one, now getting swept by River City, 5-4. and four. And, and the, the scary thing is, the last week or so, yeah, Evansville took care of Southern Illinois, but man, those gateway games were competitive. This could have been a series, if not for a couple of breaks, a couple of clutch plays in the field, that Evansville could have lost six in a row. Yeah, there's 
there's no doubt about it. We I'm a Debbie Downer today. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> mean, you bring up a good point because, again, we were talking about it the other day with Gateway, made a little mishap with the bullpen yeah. that kind of made change things with that game. Um, now we talked about the defense that and the plays that weren't made by the Irish, but they also have some really good plays in the outfield. They're last, the other night, Ryan Long in left field, going up against the fence, making a nice catch. Um, these guys were still going all out to make plays. And again, it's just sometimes the ball can, can just take, catch you by surprise. Uh, but yeah, the, the, this uh, West Division is going to be, it's gonna look like it's going to be a fun ride to finish out um, not only this first half, but even going forward toward the end of the season. I do want to briefly touch on the Friday and Saturday games. Uh, Evansville loses 5 3 uh, on Friday. That was a game started by the uh, reigning Frontier League player of the week, Luke Rennie. Uh, Luke looked like he had most of his stuff, but just a couple of bad breaks here and there. And then on Saturday, uh, losing 7-6 to six in a game that Austin nicely started. That was a game, very weird. That was the game that really the mistakes started, I think, for mm -hmm. Evansville. And then somehow, Evansville able to rally back, tied the game, but then River City, as we've mentioned, all weekend just had that final punch. Yeah, that's exactly it. River City always had it seemed like a response. Now, by no means do they really have, a, I guess, a, it seems like a powerful offense or explosive offense in terms of another home run ball, but they were able to get some, a lot of, it felt like a lot of extra base hits this weekend, getting balls into the gaps or, again, getting multiple bases off of the Otters' airs. But, again, it just seemed like they had a response for every single rally, which the Otters are used to doing at this point. They rally, they are going to come back, and they are going to fight to the end. But it seemed like the Otters kind of faced a really good team here in the West Division for the Frontier League and the River City Rascals that know how to respond whenever a team starts to rally together. And then it was kind of cool just on Sunday as a, as a USI grad, and I had the opportunity, and I still do uh, do public address for USI baseball. You had uh, Kyle Griffin on the mound in relief for Evansville, and you had Matt Chavarria on the mound uh, in relief. He was just signed, I believe, today by mm -hmm. River City because their pitching situation, and that's just the thing that keeps blowing my mind, River City's pitching situation coming into today was so strained and yet they only give up two runs as a staff. Only two runs as a staff and again after yesterday they had I guess you would say a strained bullpen yeah. and Johnny Ortiz just goes out and gives them six innings where they, basically they only had to throw a couple guys to finish out the game today and obviously finish out the sweep. Uh, like you said it just kind of worked out. Chavaria being somewhat of a local kid you know still nearby an easy call for them to make to sign somebody when again drastic measures need to be taken. So Evansville will go on the road after the sweep at the hands of River City. Uh, three games in Lake Erie, and then I believe they go to Washington That's on the weekend. Which, then, if you're a if you're an Evansville Otter uh, Frontier League All Star selection, and those announcements will come later this week, and we'll have all that information on EvansvilleOtters.com when it is publicly revealed. Uh, that's going to be a fun trip, having to go from Washington, PA, to Evansville, and then having to drive another three and a half hours to O'Fallon. So that's probably. I guess coming from Traverse City would be a little worse. Oh, I yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Uh, so that's the situation for them. Uh, two really good teams. I know Lake Erie is either they're battling in the top spot right. within their own division, and then Washington was a playoff team a year ago. The top two teams in the East Division that yeah. the Otters are going to face. And Lake Erie last year they had a down year. This year they're a team that's kind of catching people by surprise, and they're putting up a good fight this year. Uh, there's no doubt the Otters are going to be ready again to potential playoff postseason teams. Uh, we've already seen Washington the opening weekend back early May. It seems like a yeah. while ago now. And no, it does. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how all this plays out. Uh, right now in the Otters division, it, it really is a log jam up top. Southern Illinois, River City, Evansville. Right. Evansville came into the weekend in first place. When you get swept, you're not going to stay in first place. Right. So they no longer are. But uh, it is going to be interesting to see how teams kind of finish up. There is a, a, a note, you know, for the Frontier League All-Star game in O'Fallon, whichever division – Whoever the division leader is, that manager and coaching staff right. will be uh, will be the coaches for the respective teams. Uh, right now, when is that cutoff date? What the Fourth of July, I believe. Yeah, I believe it's this coming week. Yeah. So. so if Evansville is in first place come the Fourth of July, then Andy McCauley and his staff would be in O'Fallon. Um, but right now, it, it appears either uh, Southern Illinois or River City, their staffs will be there just be, yeah. just based on what we've seen. Yeah, I mean, so. just a couple games to work with between now and that deadline. Unfortunately, um, obviously, if they include the road trip to Washington, maybe, you know, but... Um, and I'm sure, you know, Andy has a young young child. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he wants to go see his kids yeah, I mean, and his it's wife. It's been a couple months. It has been. So, yeah, you probably want to man manage uh, the French League All-Star game, but if you have a young family, the break really is nice. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, 
uh, not back at Bossy Field until July 17th. That's against Lake Erie, so going to Lake Erie this week, and then we'll be back at Bossy Field July 17th, the first of three at 6.35. Uh, so 16 days between home games. So rest up, because mm -hmm. uh, once once we're back uh, July 17th, you can put it in gear, because uh, things are really gonna ramp it's up. It's gonna rev up, yep. Like I said, kind of finish out with a couple series against East Division, East Division opponents. And then once you get to August, it's all West. And it's all for the playoff push. And, um, and here at Boston Field, there's going to be a lot of big nights to look forward to, especially in the month of July when we come back. Um, German Heritage and I have been in that first home stand as well. And then also the Princess night coming up. Um, and there's just going to be a lot to look forward to here in the summer months. And obviously, just to kill some time, come on out to the ballpark. And fortunately, you just got to wait a couple weeks to do it. Yeah, no, you do. Uh be sure you check back with Otters TV, though. Be even though the Otters are on the road, we'll still have uh, new content coming out every so often. So stay with us. Uh, Sam Jelinek will be on the call on 91.5 WUEV. He has the steady hand with the camera right mm -hmm. now, too. So Sam's the man. He's Preston Linemach, Eugene, Sam behind the camera. I'm Zane Claude Felter. It's been a rough weekend, but it'll get better. This has been Otters TV.